Hey guys, I just wanted to make a video talking about the 6.1, 6.2 quiz. Of course, you can check the channel for the uh, material on 6.3 and 6.4, how to use a graphing calculator to find a line of best fit and a curve of best fit. So this is just going to be an answer key where I'm going to go over all of the questions on this quiz. Um, it will help you prepare for the first half of the chapter after watching the video on the second half or before. So question number one asks, which of the following graphs might represent a polynomial function of polynomial functions and explain how you know? So in class, I did say that the reason why it says might and not is a polynomial function is because the um, graph may do something funny after the bounds of what you can see. But as far as you can tell, um, the first graph here does look like a cubic function. So it should be a polynomial function. And one of the main properties that we talk about um, in regards to a polynomial function is the fact that it has to be smooth and it has to be continuous. So if it's not smooth or if it's not continuous, then it's not going to be a polynomial function. So as you can see, the example on the right it has some sharp corners here. So this is not going to be a polynomial function because it is not smooth. Okay. So smooth here means that it has no sharp corners as these are all sharp corners. Okay, so fairly easy question to start us off. Let's go to number two. It says here, for each polynomial function, determine the degree, the leading coefficient, and the constant term. The first function here is a little bit harder to see, but you are supposed to be looking at this uh, horizontal line here. So the degree of a horizontal line is going to be 0. For a slanted line, it's going to be different. It's going to be 1, but for a horizontal line, it is going to be 0. The leading coefficient, um, there's actually no leading coefficient. So this is a bit of a trick question because the actual um, equation that you get is just y equals negative 3. So there's no leading coefficient. So you can write none, or I also would have accepted 0 as your answer. And finally, the constant term is negative 3. Okay. Um, on the right-hand side, the shape of the graph is a parabola. So this is going to be degree 2. The leading coefficient is actually supposed to be negative 2, um, but it's not very easy to tell that. So I also would have accepted just negative because it is a parabola that's pointing downwards. And finally, the constant term, it is supposed to be the y-intercept. Just like the graph on the left, the y-intercept is always the constant term. So you can always tell what it is quite easily by looking at the graph. In this case, it is going to be uh, 2. Okay, so let's continue on to the second part um, of this quiz on the second page, or the third question, sorry. For each polynomial function, complete the table of properties. So um, the first question here does include an extra piece of information about the vertex, and what that allows you to do is draw a quick picture of what it should look like. Um, you will know that the... 1 is the constant term, so it is the y-intercept. In fact, you can actually fill that in right now. So you have a vertex of negative 1, 0, a y-intercept of 1. So your parabola is going to look something like this. It's going to be symmetric about the vertex. There we go. Um, so it is only going to have one x-intercept. In cases where I just give you the equation where you don't know um, how it crosses the... Um, x-axis. So for example, if you have something like this and you're not sure um, what kind of parabola you actually have, um, you can write it as either 0, 1, or 2. But in this quiz, it's supposed to be just one x-intercept. The domain of any polynomial function is always all real numbers, so that's easy. Uh, the range, now in this case, you will note that 0 is actually the minimum value, and it only goes up from there. So the range is going to be y is greater than or equal to 0. The end behavior is where you need to observe the different quadrants. It starts in the top right corner, and then goes 1, 2, 
3, and 4. So, it, and it always goes from left to right. So this actually goes from quadrant 2 to quadrant 1. And finally, it has one turning point. Okay, so the next part, uh, this is a cubic function. How do we know that? It, it has the highest power of 3. So a cubic function. Now, this time around, you don't know exactly what it looks like. So maybe something like that, or maybe something else. So there's no way of really knowing. By the way, I did draw it to be negative because the leading coefficient is negative. OK, um, this is degree equals 3. And the y-intercept is going to be negative 7. So since there is no way of knowing how, exactly how many um, x-intercepts there are, you can say it's either 1, 2, or 3. The y-intercept, we know that it is negative 7 because it is the constant term. As I said earlier, the domain of any polynomial function is always all real numbers, so that part is pretty straightforward. The range, now the range does extend top and bottom infinitely, so it is going to be all real numbers as well. The end behavior, again, you use the quadrant for that, so 1, 2, 3, and 4, so you will know that this time around it comes from quadrant 2 and goes into quadrant 4 to Q4. And the number of turning points. Now, this is not the only way to draw this graph. This is not the only graph that's possible. You could also have a graph with no turning points. Again, there's no way for you to know that um, if it's one or the other. So you can either say that there will be zero turning points or there will be two. Okay. So that's for number three. One of the more complicated questions in uh, the first half of the chapter. And finally, we have example number four. Um, there's a small mistake here. It's supposed to go from quadrant two to four because it's supposed to go from left to right. So please do make a note of that. And in order to make a polynomial function that satisfies all of these, um, you're actually supposed to just only draw a graph. So, so you're supposed to sketch, not actually write one. So how do you do this? Well, the first thing you want to do is look at the y-intercept, which is going to be 0. And then you see that there's two turning points, so it's going to be cubic in some way. And finally, it comes from quadrant 2 and goes into quadrant 4. So coming from quadrant 2 through the 0 and going to quadrant 4. There's other ways to draw this as well. You can draw something like um, this one here that will also work or even something like this will good work as well. So there's not a unique answer because anything that satisfies all of these characteristics works. So we're on to 4b, the last um, question here. Range of y is less than or equal to 2. The only polynomial function um, that we know out of the constant version, um, the linear, the quadratic and the cubic, the only one that has a range that looks like this is the quadratic function. Um, there are also other polynomials that we didn't look at, but in terms of the ones that we did look at, the quadratic um, function is the only one that has a range that could look like this, so the maximum value is going to be 2, the x-intercepts of 1 and 3. So I do want you guys to mark those um, writing numbers down. Uh, because that way I can tell that you know what the numbers are supposed to be. If you don't write this down, I, I don't know what you're doing. Um, so that's not good. And that's it. So that's the entirety of the quiz. Um, so please make sure that you know how to do these questions, not just these ones, but the ones in your textbook as well. If you have any questions, please um, ask me during class time or um, email me. Just find something to contact me and make sure that I can help you before the test. And that's it.